Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's episode. Today, I'm here with Holly Bustle from One Love Yoga, and we're going to be talking about breathe, learn, thrive, shaping minds, breaking barriers with yoga in schools. You are listening to Creating Wellness from Within, a podcast devoted to helping you live your best life through self-care and wellness. In each episode, we strive to offer you actionable advice and tools to help you on your journey towards greater personal wellness. I am your host, Amy Zellmer. I am editor-in-chief of Midwest Yoga and Life Magazine and author of the Chair Yoga Pocket Guide, available on Amazon. I am passionate about yoga, wellness, photography, travel, and all things glittery. You can learn more about me at creatingwellnessfromwithin.com. Today, my guest is Holly Bustle. And as a co-founder of One Love Yoga, Holly has a passion for people and connection. Naturally, when she found yoga, it was love at first breath. Holly embraces teaching, leading workshops, leading yoga teacher training, and helping individuals develop tools through their own practices. She strives to cultivate a personal sense of love, connection, and encouragement through each class that she leads and connection that she makes. When she isn't teaching yoga in the community, Holly can can be found on an adventure with her family or caring for her mini farm, giant garden, or plethora of house plants at home. Welcome to the podcast, Holly. (laughs) Thank you, Amy. Good morning. You sound like you're quite the horticulturist. (laughs) I love plants. (laughs) I love it. I love plants too, but I can't always eat them alive. (laughs) I try. So Holly, today we're going to be talking about teaching yoga in schools. And I think this is such a great topic. Um, You know, I've seen controversy across the country on whether yoga should be allowed in schools or not. Um, And I totally know your why of why you want yoga in schools. And so I'm excited for you to share that today. Yeah, thank you. I am. Um, I'm very passionate about this idea that we have these practices that are readily available to us that once we learn, we can implement on our very own anywhere from our house, from our car, from a classroom, from a chair, from a mat. Um, It's an accessible practice uh, and can really change our day, can change a trajectory. And there's so much science behind the supportive tools of the practice, the movement, the breath work, Mm -hmm. and the meditation that support a healthier way of us feeling inside that we can gift ourselves. Mm -hmm. I remember, you know, 20 some years ago when I was first starting yoga in college and um, the concept of yoga off the mat. And I was always like, what do they mean by that? You know, because at that point, all I knew was asana. I knew nothing else about yoga. Um, And now it has such a different, it just hits different, right? When you hear yoga off the mat. Um, And that's, you know, yes, you are doing yoga on the mat in the schools, but you're teaching them how to use it off the mat as well and to use these skills um, in any situation like you said they can be um, sitting in the classroom and use their yoga skills absolutely so one love yoga really is responding to a mental health crisis that we have Mm -hmm. happening in our world today everywhere Um, anxiety and depression are on the rise and it is really important that we just take a step back and understand that there are some simple techniques that each of us can employ that can help us to settle our minds. It helps us to be ready to learn. So when you think about a child walking into a classroom, um, it used to be, I think, that the common thought was the kids are here to read. You're going to sit down in this chair. We're going to start our lesson, right? Everybody starts the lesson. You close the books at the end of the day. You go home. There's a mom that's waiting for you at home or a caregiver who's got something ready for you to eat and a snack and in a perfect world, you're doing some homework. But the reality is, is this is just not what the typical home is looking like these days. Um, And it's not the typical path for teachers either. We've got many kids who are showing up to school. They're not ready to learn for whatever reason it might be. Um, And so 
as an educator, if your main purpose is to provide an education, one of the things that we can do as a collective, as a community, is support these institutions and these children and teachers with tools that will help us be ready to learn. And emotional regulation. And what can we do to do that? Um, breath work and meditation are top of the list. So we teach kids how to be still because it helps them to connect to what do they feel in their bodies right now? Do they feel a, what does it feel like when you're ready to learn? What does it feel like when you're sad? What does it feel like when you're anxious? What is your body trying to send you? Do you have sweaty palms? What does that mean? If your heart is racing, what does that mean? If your face is hot and red, what could that mean? And teaching the kids to identify a physical symptom before there's a big outburst. Um, because then you feel sweaty palms, you know it's time to pause. This is what we teach the kids. You feel a sweaty palm, you feel a raising heartbeat. Let's take a pause. Let's take a few deep breaths into the belly, into the ribs, into the chest. Can we start to feel the symptoms that we're feeling go away? Can we start to feel the noise in our minds start to quiet a little bit? Can we harness in the many thoughts that are kind of all over, like a bunch of raindrops? Can we feel them harness into an icicle, right? Now they're all going into one place. We can see it. We can focus on it. And our brain kind of gets that break. That's what we teach the kids. It's kind of giving your brain that moment to pause on a lot of many things to one single thing, which helps us to then be ready to do what we need to do that day. And the beautiful thing about it is it, it doesn't take long, 20 minutes, yeah. 20 minutes in the day, even these momentary pauses of three minutes of breathing, breath work can create a change for these kids. So you're talking about right before a test, three minutes of breathing can help your children in that classroom achieve better test scores. Why would we not do that as a practice, yeah. as a culture, right? If we're, if so much of um, how we're measuring the success, right, in the schools on testing, if that matters so much, why would we not take the time to breathe? Before we put the hand to the paper, let's help them get ready for the test before we test them. So these are strategies that we're teaching. Um, Self-awareness is important. Um, social emotional learning goes along with what we're teaching in the classroom. So how we speak to other people, um, you know, that only resonates if we understand how we're speaking to ourselves. Right. So how are you talking to yourself? Not I'm the worst at that, but I'm still learning how to do that. Or I'm still building this skill. I love that language. I'm still building that skill right now. I'm working hard at um, taking baby steps in this skill. Then they can understand that in other people. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And you're still building that skill. And, you know, I know a lot of kids. Um, it's it's modeling, right? It's modeling for those children how to have positive self talk and um, how how to self monitor. You know, like you said, when they start feeling the sweaty palms or if they start getting shaking, like they're angry. You know how to take that pause and step back because a lot of these kids are not learning it at home. They don't have that modeling, and and that's you know, no fault to the parents. The parents were never taught it either. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so what we're doing is we're, we're teaching, um, the children how to have that positive attitude, positive self-talk. And I mean, just think of the profound ripple effect that this is having, because now I, I can't remember, is you that told me the story or someone else told me the story, but like the kid went home and mom was having a problem and the kid taught the mom how to breathe, yep. <laughs> you know? And so just like a and, ripple effect. 
It is. And what is, okay, so this is so beautiful. There's a couple examples. One of which is, I think sometimes we don't realize the impact of what we're doing. Till I'm yeah. in the grocery store and I'm shopping for groceries and all of a sudden I've got these tiny arms around my leg and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, which one of my kids did I bring and how did I forget <laughs> they're with me? And I look down, it's just this little girl who's giving me this big hug and I can't see her face. So I'm not really sure. And I'm thinking, oh, she thinks I'm her mom, but I'm not. And she looks up and she says, yoga teacher, yoga teacher, I want Aww. you to know I've been breathing every night before bed and it helps me to go to sleep. And so here's her mom kind of like, you know, and you never know the adult interaction, like your <laughs> right. child's latched onto my leg. But, and I said, I'm so proud of you. I am so proud of you for learning this and for remembering and then for doing it. I'm so proud of you for that. And then her mom proceeds to tell me this story about how bedtime used to be really difficult for her daughter. And they had a really hard time getting her to sleep before 11 or 12 p.m. She was having a hard time falling asleep. but three-part breath is the one of the first things I teach these kids and we do it on repeat. It's the same breath every class till they've mastered it till about, usually it's about two weeks. And then you've got, I'll say who wants to lead breath work and every kid's hand shoots up and they can all teach you breath work, you know, at five years old, at six years old, at seven years old, we've got these we're teaching world breathers here. This is what I say. Like these kids are world breathers. And once you teach them how to breathe, it's like riding a bike or driving a car. They will always have that mm -hmm. in their back pocket. No one can take that from them. So yeah. next time they're in a situation that they need to use it, they can use it. So instead of yelling at somebody or instead of punching their gas and not letting somebody in when they're driving, they can just take a deep breath. And, and it's about me. What am I feeling right now? And how can I be in charge of that? What What is my next move? I've now realized that I'm my energy is heightened. My nervous system is heightened. And that's me. I'm in charge of that. So I need to, now I know that. What does it feel like? I know that because I was taught that. And how can I bring myself down? So this is allowing us to have a culture of children that understand the difference between reacting and responding. Yeah, yeah. And here's what I'm here to tell the world. If you think that this doesn't matter, I have some news for you. These kids that I'm teaching in school, they are going to be your caregivers when you're old. They are going to be the babysitters for your kids that you don't have yet. They are going to be your neighbors. They are going to be the community workers. They are going to be your employees. They are going to directly affect your bottom line and your business that you are building right now because they will be who you hire and they are going to show up well-equipped, well-equipped because we've given them a base from a young age and we practice it and they know what it feels like to change their own body. Just yesterday second example in a yoga club after school the kids come in they know how to get their own mat roll it out responsibly we do our sun salutations which helps us to move our body to get energy out that we've got then we move into our breath work and a few minutes of just rest I've got a group of 16 kids. They all do it. They all come from different backgrounds, different walks of life, different cultures. But they all come in heightened. And in the 17 minutes that it takes us to do our sun salutations, our breath work, and our rest, they all just go, I feel so good now. And I remind them, you did that. Mm -hmm. You did that for yourself. And it, let me rem I remind them every time. It doesn't take a long time. You don't need to pay a bunch of money for this to anybody. You don't even need a yoga mat for it. You can do it in right. your own bedroom. You can do it in your own classroom. You can do it in your own office. With little time, you can achieve a big difference in how you feel. 
the piece that they, that I'm not yet teaching them at the young age is the long lasting effects that it will have positively impacting it. So now I'm going to talk to my healthcare professionals. I'm going to talk to my insurance people. I'm going to talk to my business people. Once again, the message is, is that when you can self-regulate and when you prioritize understanding what you feel in your body and how that pause is valuable to your day, how important it is and the dollars that that translates to in the healthcare system, in the work system, in the world of back pain, in the world of anxiety, it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. You know, I, I do a lot of um, speaking at conferences and I often will start my talk Um, I just have everybody take a few big breaths together. And, you know, there's always the ones in the room who, you know, arms crossed, sit back in their chair, don't want to participate. But like you collectively can feel the shift in just those couple breaths, right? Like, and I always say, you know, everybody's coming here with a different background. Someone might've been running late. Someone might've been stuck in traffic. Someone might've already done yoga that morning. You know, like we're all coming into this room with a different background. So let's just take two minutes to just like settle in and ground and, and just shift our energy into the space that we're in now and what we're focusing on now. And it's so profound. And, you know, these are adults that I'm speaking to, but it's just so profound. And I can only imagine with children, children are just so much more moldable. And, you know, like I said, that modeling that you're doing with them and just like they can do it on their own. Like if they're sitting in class and they're feeling anxious for whatever reason, they now know that they can just... You know, take a few breaths sitting in their desk. And I mean, we all know the shift. We all know how that feels. Like, I can't imagine if we'd have learned this when we were in elementary school, right? Like things would have been so different growing up, I feel. Yeah, I love it. We, I have a little girl who came to me yesterday and, you know, sometimes the kids just need to release something. So she's Mm -hmm. telling me all about how this little girl said this to her and it was mean. And it was, it was not a statement that was kind. Um, And she was upset. And I said, okay. Um, I said, can you give me three words to describe how your body feels right now? And she did. She said, um, crazy, angry, and really sad. And I said, okay. And so I said, um, what do you think about sundown pose? And sundown pose is something that we teach to the children. Because if someone's not ready for yoga in our classroom environment, we say, if you're not ready to participate in yoga, that's okay. We have a few options of what kids can do to stay on the mat and and be making decisions that help them to understand and practice autonomy on their yoga mats, but also in a respectful way. So sundown poses, lay on the belly, stack your forearms on top of one another and allow your forehead to come down because it removes the sight of the kids to see everything around them. In some instances, the biceps kind of serve as a little bit of an earmuff. So if they're feeling overstimulated, that helps. But then they can push their belly down into the ground when they breathe and then let it come Mm. back. So we've taught that belly push to them. So it helps to re-regulate them. So I said, what do you think about sundown pose? And she said, okay. So we did sundown pose and then we got back up and I said, "Um, how does your body feel? And she said, "Um, calm. And it feels like my shoulders aren't up here. Mm-hmm. It feels like they're down here. And she said, and it feels better right here and points to her throat. It's just interesting what a child will tell you when you give them a minute to figure it out instead of just saying, yeah. well, what she said doesn't matter and you just need to move on, right? Yeah, they do need to move on. But if they could do that on their own, they would have done it already. They wouldn't have come to you in the first place. They need your help. 
So now we can help them. We have a beautiful opportunity. So I love to say this to the children. Do you have control over what someone else says to you? No. Do you want to take a bow and arrow and turn it around to yourself and pull a second arrow after someone already let one go at you? No. So how do we stop ourselves from pulling that second arrow back at ourselves? What do we do? Sundown pose. And remember that I have control over me. And then know your own truths. I think that's really important to teach kids. What is true about you? Yeah, what is true about you? She said, you're dumb. Are you dumb? Do you believe you're dumb? No? Okay. So was what she said true? No. Okay. Does she have power over you? No. Okay. Let's go to sundown pose. Because in that moment, it's not really that what this little girl said that they necessarily believe it's true. It's that it hurts, right? It hurts when somebody says something to right. us. that's not nice. So what we're dealing with is that emotion, that feeling of hurt. And it's the speaking of what this person said to us. And now we need to open back up our own voice. So how do we do that? We regulate. And we feel like we're heard and cared for. Then we can go back to speaking our own truth, you know, without needing to respond with a hurtful word back to this person. Then we can stop the hurt person hurting a person. Yeah, stopping the cycle. Yeah. And more adults need to learn all of this as well. <laughs> Don't they? <laughs> yeah, right. the kids, kid, this is um something that actually was very humbling. So, you know, I'm a mom. I've got um a stepdaughter who's close to 30. Um, I'm also a grandma. My grandson is just turning, he just turned one. And then I've got three kids at home. 16, 13, and 10, right? So humbling when you realize mm -hmm. that kids will tell you everything when you're not their parents, including what their parents do and say. Yeah. Yeah. So a little girl did share with me that her mom was just yelling all over the place. And um, I said, it sounds like that moment was hard for your mom. And she said, it was. Um. And she said, so I taught her to lay on her back, put her hand over her heart, her hand over her belly, just like you taught us. And we just laid on the floor and breathed for a little while. Mm -hmm. And I said, and what happened? And she goes, and then I heard my mom start to cry. And then after that, we both got up and it seemed like everything was better. And I can't help but think that in that moment, like there had to be so much that was just built up for this woman. Yeah. Right. Just built up in her day and her week. And, and Overwhelmed. She, was, she was trying to do the best she could do. I believe the inherent good in people. But what do you do once you're in that? Like, how do you recover? Right. Pause. Breathe. You know, take a moment because when you're spinning, the direction you go is just going to look like a Tasmanian devil. <laughs> you know, you don't want to react. You want to respond. And that's what we're teaching the kids. How do we respond? Yeah. yeah. And notice yeah. when you're reacting, sometimes we are going to react because we're human, right? We're going to do that. But we can learn from that. We can learn. We can think about, oh, you know what? I felt that coming. And did you pause? Mm -mm, I didn't. Okay. Do you think we could practice pausing today? You know, yeah, they can practice. And once they have that practice, then they know it. It's just like a practice of a, of a person getting in your car. When your gas light turns on, you know you need to go get gas, right? So you do that for your car. You go get gas because you want to make it to the next place. If you don't put gas in your car, you're going to run out of gas somewhere and hopefully not in the winter here in Minnesota. Right. <laughs> but 
you need to fill your gas tank and the light comes on. We, we know that already. The light is going to come on. So I think as humans, we just need to know no matter who you are, where you are, your light is going to come on. So maybe fill your tank so you don't run out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and as we said earlier, it doesn't have to take long to fill the tank. You know, it can take, it can literally be two minutes. You know, if you have 15 minutes, great, but literally it can be two minutes. If I it can be that, while you're driving to the gas station, even literally, you know, like, you know what I tell people start a habit of belly breathing while your car is filling up with gas. Mm. That's literally one of my favorite things to say. If you are, um, in a drive through line then belly breathe. If you are at a gas pump, then belly breathe. If you are at a stoplight, belly breathe. And just watch, just watch the change. Just watch it happen. Watch it roll in. You know, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, it can have such a profound shift in just literally two minutes. So Holly, I want to make sure we take some time to talk a little more about one love yoga and what you guys are doing um, and how people can become involved. Absolutely. Thank you for asking. Um, So you can learn more about us, about the the yoga that we offer in the community um, at onelove.yoga. In addition to that, um, we are in schools. We teach after-school yoga programs. What we also teach in-school programming, which means typically we have our own classroom. Those schools have their own yoga mats, and we cycle kids in once a week. They come in, and they're doing a 20-minute, 25-minute yoga class, and then they're going out. It involves the teacher as well, so everybody is receiving this benefit of this collective reset. Um in it's really absolutely amazing to get to have this opportunity to create a positive impact and change that just ripples like we've spoken to being involved in that there's a couple different ways so a um oftentimes schools don't quite have enough money to cover the cost of yoga so we do a lot of fundraising for that our gala is upcoming it is the last Friday in February, and we would love to invite everybody in the community that is listening to this to buy a ticket online to attend our gala or to sponsor our gala. So um, anywhere from $375 to $5,000 is a sponsorship to our gala. They each include different levels of um, give back from us to the person who is sponsoring and recognition. But what a better way to enjoy a night out. It's going to be at the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum. We're going to have a beautiful dinner, dancing. We're going to listen to some stories of yoga. Um, Those funds will directly impact school programming for the 2024 year. So that allows us to come back to schools and say, we've got enough money to be here full time again. So we're really reaching wide this year to the community to ask for support for that. The second thing is yoga teachers. Um, We need more yoga teachers. So whether you're a karma yoga um, giver right now and you're saying, uh, I would love to give an hour of my time to teach a class at the farmer's market on a Saturday or a Sunday, um, that would be lovely. You can reach out to us right through our website. Or if you're saying I'm interested in helping with some kids programming, that would be lovely. And there's other volunteer opportunities like volunteering to um, maybe do some some collective uh, behind the scenes work, if you will, um, planning for our gala or being on a committee. Um, And we're actively looking for board members right now. So if you're a person in the community who says, hey, you know, I really believe in this idea of yoga in schools and helping the mental and physical wellness of children and youth in Minnesota, um, then we would love to invite you to learn more about what it would be like to serve with our organization. We've got lots of different ways to plug in. We also were a part of Benevity, 
which is a way of giving. So a lot of larger organizations and businesses will offer um, volunteer hours and support, like supported through your work or match a donation that you make. Mm -hmm. Um, so we are signed up with a bunch of organizations. If you have, if you invest money through Thrivent, then you can make a donation to our organization that will be matched through Thrivent. Um, and, and most how awesome is that, right? It, it's, it's amazing. And oftentimes doubled. it is automatically doubled and Thrivent often isn't even people giving their own money that they are sending the money on your behalf because they're a nonprofit investing. So there's lots of different ways that you can look to be involved, all of which can be found on our website, or people can reach out directly to me. Um, HB at onelove.yoga is my email. My phone number is published if you Google us. And I would just love to hear from people. I would love to hear their stories or the impact of yoga or connect, have coffee or tea or go for a walk with anybody. I'd like to connect. And for everyone listening, um, there's a clickable link in the show notes to onelove.yoga. So wherever you are listening, there should be a link right in your show notes to make it easy for you to hop over and find Holly and One Love. So Holly, um, any final parting thoughts you have for our listeners today? Um, and like a key takeaway from today? Um, three minutes can change your life. Mm. Three minutes, Love that. you know, let's breathe and, and let's talk about the value of the pause and not just talk mm. about it, but let's start yep. taking it. Let's take it and value it. Love that. Holly, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate it. And um, just thanks for all you're doing in the community with the schools, making a huge impact. Amy, thank you so much. Thank you for taking a hold of um, Midwest Yoga and Life. And thank you for really cultivating a community where all of us who enjoy and believe in this practice feel like we have a safe space to show up and really feel some support as studios and as teachers, um, as a nonprofit organization. Um, what an incredible gift you've given us. Thank you. Mm, thank you. And thank you all for listening. I really hope you enjoyed today's episode. And please consider leaving a five-star review wherever it is that you're listening to help others on their own wellness journey discover the podcast. And be sure to head over to MidwestYogaLife.com and join our email list to stay in the know of upcoming events and the Minnesota Yoga Conference and so much more. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please consider supporting it through BuyMeACoffee.com slash Amy Z. Thank you all for listening. Have a great day, everyone. And I will see you in the next episode.